Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel. We're back here again today. Today we have this video. It's by Newman Ali Khan. It's part of his Deeper Look series, and this one in particular piqued my interest for whatever reason. It's it's titled "The Reality of Human Beings," and supposedly this is kind of a tafsir, maybe on uh, Surah Al Azr. And this is one of the very few uh, surahs that I do have memorized. Um, and that I use in my salah, salah, and um, so I would like to, you know, when you when you when you say something so many times a day, it's good to have a deeper understanding of what you're actually saying, and that way you can have, um, you know, that feeling when you pray, that feeling that you feel connected with Allah, you feel connected with, with what, what you're saying. That's a very important. I think if we just kind of go through the motions in our prayer, we're just reciting the verses, but not really pondering the meaning, um, then our salah begins to feel empty and pointless. <clears throat> so anyway, I think this is a good thing for me just to kind of uh, check out. And inshallah, it's beneficial for you brothers and sisters as well. So I invite you to watch this with me. First, before we get into the video, brothers and sisters, I'd like to take the opportunity to remind you that Allah tells us in the Quran, who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and does righteousness and says, indeed, I am one of the Muslims. Brothers and sisters, I'm introducing a shirt that I designed to inspire and encourage you to spread the message of Islam to those around you, inshallah. These shirts are 100% cotton, so they're both comfortable to wear, but they also have a simple design that serves as a great conversation starter, an invitation to those around you that are perhaps curious about Islam, providing you an opportunity to share the beauty of Islam and the truth of it with others and receive the blessings and rewards as a result. So I invite you to wear this t-shirt with pride and let it be a reminder to always strive towards giving dawah and sharing the message of Islam with those around you. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Let's get into the video. The thing of it is, all human beings... Some of, them, some of us are rich, some of us are poor, some of us are healthy, some of us are sick, some of us are strong and others are weak. Some have better opportunities, some have less opportunities, some are free and some are caged. Human beings find themselves in any variety of circumstances. But the statement that Allah has made is that every one of us is in loss. Doesn't matter what state we're in, we're in loss. How is, that's the common denominator between all of us whether the one who looks apparently happy or healthy or wealthy or prosperous or the one who looks miserable, it doesn't matter. Allah has made a unanimous declaration. All of you are losing. All of you are actually not just losing, you are in loss already. You're drowning in loss already. And that helps me appreciate what the previous ayah was. The biggest proof that all of us are in a continuous state of loss is time itself. Because that's one thing you and I can never gain more of. That is one thing we're always going to be losing. Today will never come back. Maghrib will never come back. The moments that we've passed away, hayatuka and fas, your life is nothing but inhales and exhales, that's all they are. That inhale that went in and the exhale that went out is not coming back. These are moments of our life that have gone and will never return. It doesn't matter whether you're sick or healthy or poor or wealthy, what, what part of the world you live in, there is, there is one loss that is unavoidable and that is of time. And that loss, as days go by, is taking a toll on you. Uh, you know, in, a, in, in the sense of physics, which is kind of creepy, I was talking to a friend who's a, a physics major, you know, through the laws of entropy and, and all of that, the universe is constantly expanding. And by implication, it's actually constantly breaking apart. Everything is tearing apart. Everything is breaking. And people that have a purely scientific worldview become very, you know, uh, uh, basically they have this annihilist kind of sense, sense of the world. Things are going to end anyway. We're all just going to be, it's all going to be over. The universe is just going to collapse. Everything's falling apart. Everything around us is actually breaking apart. Slowly but surely, the decay and loss is the reality of the entire physical universe around us. As a matter of fact, the human body, we're constantly losing cells. We're constantly, dead skin is falling off, hair is falling off, whether we realize it or not. We're constantly losing physically also. Even Allah mentions not only a reference to what happens in the, uh, in the grave, قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حفيظ. We already know what the earth keeps taking away from them. And we have a book that guards everything. Even though you're being decayed away, even as you're alive, there's decay happening. 
But even as you, after you die, your body is going through decay inside the grave. And Allah says, regardless, what needed to be preserved will always stay preserved. وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ hafiz. But this is the notion of loss that I wanted to start off with. That time is the ultimate loss that cannot be escaped for, for, for any of us. Now I want to talk to you about the, the, the word choice for loss in this ayah. And that's the word khusr. It's a common word in the Qur'an. It's used many, many times. It's used to describe, for example, al-khasirun, the losers, ulaika humul khasirun, occurs in the Qur'an. Uh, you know, alladhina khasiru, those who, those who lost. Khasiru dunya wal akhira, Qur'an says, they lost this life and in the next, they lost both. So the common word actually in the Qur'an for loss is this word, or, or the origin of this word, khusr. Uh, as for the word loss itself, not as verbs and other forms, the, ver- the, the noun itself, khusr, is used in three forms in the Qur'an. You find khusr and you find khasara. وَلَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارَ Or you find khusran. خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ so you find three versions of the word loss, and there's subtle differences between them. Khusran is used for the worst possible loss, that's al-mubalagha, that's not used here. The khasara is used when you're already in a state of loss, and it gets worse. That's why it, typically it comes with ziyada in the Qur'an. لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا khasara. They were already losing, and then more loss on top of the loss they already had. Things got even worse. That's khasar. That's, we don't recite, إِنَّ insana lafi khusran. Nor do we recite in al insana lafi khasar. We recite in al insana lafi khusr. The word khusr is the base notion of loss. And what Allah is saying is by using that word that there are degrees of loss. That there are some people are losing a lot, some people are losing a little, some people are losing insignificant amounts, some people are losing terrible amounts. And by the way, just to put things in relative order, like you know, somebody who you know le- uh, loses a dollar and is a millionaire, may not, oh, was that mine? Oh, I didn't really realize. And it's not a big deal for them. But somebody else who has barely any money loses one dollar, and that's a huge deal for them. So it could look like the same loss, but it's not felt the same way. It's not felt by people the same way. There are degrees in which we feel or sense, feel the pinch of loss, right? So Allah is making a comment that whoever you are, whether you realize it or not, at some level you are experiencing loss. Of course, the ultimate loss being time itself, but it's not limited to that. How do we know it's not limited to that? Well, we know that because Allah used the word khusrin. The in at the end, the tanween, creates ta'mim. All kinds of loss. It could mean great loss, and it can also mean all kinds of loss. So now I want to dig into this word loss before we go any further uh, from the Arabic point of view. What's the origin of this word? Man, this uh, series is... is appropriately named a deeper look. He's going very deep. He's going very deep here. Al-Khasir al-Ladhi yanqusu al-Mikyal wal-Mizan wal-Khasir al-Ladhi dhahaba ma'luhu wa'aqluhu ay khasirahuma. First of all, the Khasir in Arabic is not just a loser, he's a cheater. Uh, someone who deceives, like you know when people, back in the day they had, the, when they sold vegetables or rice or fruit or whatever, they had the scale, the weight on this side and the, whatever you're buying on the other side and they put false weight or they tip the scale a little bit so they give their customer a little less. That person who would give a little less was actually called a khasir, meaning he causes khusran. That's what, it, what it's uh, called. Mm. So now, first of all, human beings are in loss in plus. I think there's a, a verse in the Qur'an, um, or maybe multiple verses in the Qur'an, instructing us not to be a person that causes loss in this, in this sense. It could be hadith, but uh, I want to say it's in the Qur'an. Guys, also, human beings are being cheated. Human beings are in a, in a, in a scam. <laughs> They're in a scam. They're being deceived. This scammed. is a notion described elsewhere in the Qur'an. That this is dunya illa mata'u al Worldly life is nothing but means by which people get deceived. And part of the meaning of khusr is actually, you know, the, this idea of, of ghurur, of deception. So human beings are being cheated out of something. Human beings don't realize. They're, they've got blinders on. They think they're running after something that will give them success. Or think they're running away from some, some kind of loss. But actually they're running right towards it. They've been cheated all along. They haven't seen the truth for what it is. This is why that dua is so important. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna tiba'ahu. Allah show us the truth as truth and give us the ability to follow it. 
وَأَرِنَ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَرْزُقْنَ اجْتِنَابَهُ Give us the ability to see false as false and enable us to stay away from it because sometimes false is so attractive you can't help but be compelled towards it, drawn into it, pulled into its gravitational force, its field <laughs> and you and I just go into it blinded. And when someone tries to wake us up, we'd rather not. We, it's too uncomfortable a reality. In that case, one is deceiving themselves. One chooses to stay happy and deceive themselves. Also, uh, al-khasir is also used for someone who's lost their mind as a result of losing everything. So the inna insan la fi khusr is actually in a, in a sense, human beings are indulged in insanity. Human beings are crazy. What are they doing? You know, like you would think of someone running into a building on fire. What are you doing? You're crazy. That's the comment made by Allah, I swear by time, that's running out. If the human being runs, they tend to run towards the wrong thing, towards their own destruction. They're running towards their own bankruptcy. And this perhaps is also an illusory reference to Judgment Day. When people wake up on Judgment Day, they can't believe what's happening around them. And Allah says, وَتَرَ النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ You're going to see people, they look like they're drunk. They're not drunk at all. You know, they're just, they're going to, can't believe what's happening in front of them. And they look just tipsy. That, that's what they're going to look like. So now moving on, خَسَرْتُ الْمِيزَانِ وَأَخْسَرْتُهُ نَقَصْتُهُ خَسِرَ التَّاجِرِ that's the other, the lazim meaning of it also. For a businessman to experience khusr is actually for the business to collapse. Human beings are, are drowning in bankruptcy. They're heading, or they're, they've, they've already been duped into bankruptcy. وَالْمَعْنَ الْمِحْوَرِ نَقْصُ الشَّيْءِ بِذَهَابِ أَجْزَاءٍ مِّنْهُ فُقْدًا It actually, the overall meaning is when you are losing something continuously, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, that's actually called khusr. Which reminds me of the essential meaning of asr, when something is squeezed away drip by drip by drip by drip by drip. It's actually a similar meaning to that when loss is happening, but it's not all of loss all at once, but you're losing just a little bit at a time. I'm reminded of that experiment, um, I think it was in psych class, I can't remember what class it was. We, we saw this... Uh, Man, I've had this experience multiple times. I watched Nubin Ali Khan, and I feel like he just doesn't. He's he t talks a lot, but I feel like I'm not. Re we're not really getting anywhere. We're not really getting anywhere. He's like going too. He's going too deep. Reel it in, Newman. That's how I feel. Experiment of a of a of a frog thrown into boiling water. You know, it's, it's it just jumps out right away, or. It's, towards hot water, it jumps out right away. And then you have this frog who's just sitting in water, it's slowly being heated. And it's not jumping. It's just sitting there. And actually it gets to the point where it dies. But it doesn't jump. It didn't realize because the death to it was coming slowly. The slow poison got to it. If he saw the consequences of it all at once, he would have jumped. But no, human beings are just drowning more and more, deeper and deeper and deeper. Allah will give this, energy, uh, this imagery in Surah An-Nur and describe a person drowning in the middle of an ocean and say, you know, لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَهُ يَرَهَا A person was drowning in the ocean, it's so dark underneath at the bottom, he almost can't even see his own hand. Like that's the depth to which people can go into khusr. <laughs> Now, as far as you know, old commentators, classical commentary like Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, they had lots of things to say about what this loss could mean. And I've kind of compiled all of them in one phrase for you. Fassaru al Khusr bil Halaka, they interpreted that to mean human beings are headed towards destruction, not just loss. Wal Ghaban, which is loss itself. Wal Uquba, they're headed towards retribution from Allah. Wa bin Nuqsil Maddi, and it also towards even material loss meaning human beings, whatever they do in this life, they can't gain, they can only lose. Believer, disbeliever, that doesn't matter. It's not even talking about heaven and hell. In this life itself, we can only lose. We can only lose our youth. We can only, like you can have the nicest home, but by the time you're 75, you can't, you don't have the, the back to go up the stairs. You can't use the six bedrooms upstairs. What are you going to do with it? You have an amazing swimming pool, you could die if you fall into it. Like you're, you're, it's not anything for you anymore. Young people will come see your mansion and say, wow, I wish I lived here. And the people who actually live there are like, this is a curse. I can't, you know, my children have all gone and left me. My grandkids can never come and visit. All I have is this, this giant lonely house. That's all I have. That becomes a, a prison for them, you know. 
So we, we can only experience loss because we ourselves are decaying and heading towards an end in this life. That's how Allah made us. Kulluman alayha fan. Allah actually says everyone on this earth was meant to be discontinued. Like, it's not a flaw of God that we get older and our skin gets wrinklier and our eyesight gets weaker and our back gets weak, you know. It's, that's not a flaw in our design. You would think, you know, when a watchmaker makes a really expensive Swiss watch or whatever, it's supposed to last forever. Why couldn't God just make us more durable? We could have just, you know, there's something wrong with this manufacturing. Actually, by design, Quran says, you were designed to deteriorate. وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Whoever we, we give age to, we start reversing them in their creation. We start making them weaker and smaller like they were as kids. You know? I'm, I'm reminded of Alusi rahimahullah. So many years ago I read this. said, you know, when a child is small, they're always looking up, climbing up, reaching up. And a man gets old, his back bends, and he's always looking down, like, to his future home. SubhanAllah. And you know, children, they keep us up late at night. They don't let us sleep. They cry, they get stomach aches, they want to drink or whatever. You know, or they cry because that's their power trip. Like fake cry. You ever seen kids fake cry? <laughs> You're like, that's fake. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm still going to do it. But you get older and you can't sleep. And people can't sleep. They have a hard time. And this is perhaps Allah's way of letting them stay up for the night prayer. You're about to meet God. So He facilitates Qiyam. You don't have to take pills for that. You could just. And by the way, if you start making qiyam, shaitan's gonna come put you to sleep anyway. So, <laughs> so take advantage. Anyhow, so overall, when you study loss in the Quran, wasairu ma fil Quran min al-tarkib huwa bima'na fautu ma kana yumkin an yafuza bihi min thawabin wa naimin lo aman wa taba. Quran's commentary on loss is actually to miss out on opportunities that you could have taken advantage of. That's how Allah describes loss. Mm. Loss is not about money. Loss is not about, you know, material anything. Loss is not about loss of loved ones. Loss is actually in the Quran about opportunity missed. That's all. That you, had you truly believed and had you followed the right guidelines, you could have availed from that opportunity. Okay. Uh, Imam Hamid al Farahi talking about this loss, he says something really beautiful. كان عليهم أن يتنافسوا في ما هو أحق به. It's as if Allah is commenting on the tragedy of human history saying these people should have been competing with one another in things that are far more worthy of competing in. Far more worthy of competition. Mm -hmm. What were you competing with other, other people in? Looks? Money? Showing something off? What was that worth? And it was incumbent on people to wake up from their sleep of being distracted all the time and their sleep of being entertained all the time and remaining heedless and asleep to reality before all is lost and the only thing left alive is regret. Like Allah Himself says, when the time, the moment comes when death arrives, then He calls out, God, my master, just send me back. I'll, I'm gonna change. I got it, I got it, I know my time's up, just give me a little bit extra overtime, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be different this time. That's, that's the only thing that's going to be left is regret, because you realize you didn't do anything with the time you did have. May Allah not make us from those people. In his commentary, just a summarization also, he uses time, meaning, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ This statement, he uses it to remind us of perished nations. You know, Asr is the time that passed away on very powerful nations. Who used to say, Allah even describes them, أَوَلَمْ تَكُونُوا أَقْسَمْتُمْ, أقسمتم مِنْ قَبْلُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ زَوَالٍ Aren't you the same people who used to swear back in the day, there, will, there shall be no downfall or, on our civilizations? Have you ever wondered, like people go, you know, ancient Roman ruins, or Egyptian ruins, right? Or we go to like these, these, these palaces, and we take pictures next to them, these monuments around the world. We take pictures next to them, grave sites, etc. But what we're looking at are not just, you know, it's one thing to visit the grave of a dead person. These monuments are actually the graves of dead nations. That's what they are. And we look at them like, that's pretty cool, I took a picture next to this, you know, the pyramid or that. But that's actually, that's a graveyard of very powerful nations who at one point believed 
there shall be no downfall for them. We're number one, number one forever, baby. That's what they believed. That's what they held. They prided themselves in it. And Allah says, time came and ripped all of that to shreds and look at where they are now. They're just part of your selfie. That's all they are now. Mm -hmm. And he used and he uses this, the very same statement to remind us by looking at that history, you're still around, you better not join them. You better not become like them. Meaning learn from history and, and get your act together. Alright, that was, there were some good little nuggets in there. There were some good little nuggets in there. Let's see, like at the beginning you talked about... Um, right, like the world's gonna, the world's gonna end... The world's expanding and it's gonna end. Okay, but here's my here's my thing with this this little uh, talk here. A little bit confused because uh, th this was only like the first uh, ayat of of. Sorry, I keep looking at the wrong camera. This was only the first ayat of Surah Al Azr, which, if I remember correctly, the translation is is in English is something along the lines of. Verily, uh, or for sure, man is at loss, which, yes, he did expound very deeply on here. But uh, the next sentence, again, I, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong here. The next sentence goes on to say, except those who believe and do righteous deeds, um, something like that, right? So I'm a, li a little bit like confused here. Maybe there's a part five because I see this was part four. Maybe there's a part five where he goes into goes into that. But he was like making all these blanket statements that like yeah, ver like we're all losing, we're all constantly losing, period. But if I remember correctly, in the Quran, the next ayat goes on to say, well, we're all losing except those who believe and do righteous deeds. And recommend one another to the truth. That's the other part. Um, so, a little bit confused about that. Nonetheless, there were some good little nuggets here and there. Numan Ali Khan, very knowledgeable guy. But like I said in the middle of the video, it's like it seemed like he goes so deep that it's like hard to follow. It's like, come on, man! Like, like make the point, reach the conclusion. You know what I mean? Say the details, and then we can move on. But here it was a good example like he he went on about the word kusur for like a very long time and may, maybe that's just where i'm at on my journey that i don't i don't uh i don't have like the foundation for the, all those like tiny little details to be like super duper interesting but um nonetheless uh may allah bless Numan ali khan here for sharing the 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 knowledge with us and uh, inshallah that was beneficial for you brothers and sisters, and um, I sure hope it was. So, inshallah, we will see you all in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.